Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar Shaping the Root Canal with Confidence and Predictability. My name is Jackie van Herk, and I will be your host for tonight. Our speaker for today is Professor Dr. Pierre Mastou. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A on the bottom of your screen. For now, I would say enjoy the webinar. A bon chance to Pierre. Thank you. So let's start. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as you can see, uh, the topic uh, I'm going to address uh, tonight is uh, shaping the root canal with confidence and predictability. And uh, my goal is to share with you uh, the long experience I have in uh, endodontic treatment. So as you know, uh, the current definition of endodontics is the prevention and treatment of apical periodontitis, uh, especially uh, treatment when uh, uh, apical periodontitis is present. So when uh, we have an X-ray like this one on the left-hand side, where on an X-ray we see a root, uh, a tooth with a root, and when we see some radiolucency around the root, when the uh, tooth is uh, necrotic, we know that the root canal system is infected. And of course, the goal of the treatment is to get rid of this bacteria and it is usually done uh, through a combination of uh, mechanical instrumentation and antiseptic irrigation. And you can see uh, sometimes it is possible to negotiate a lateral canal. Then after uh, cleaning and shaping, we have to fill the root canal system the best as we can and it is very, very important uh, regarding the outcome to quickly complement this uh, filling, this root filling with a tight coronal seal. And in this way, we can expect a fair amount of uh, good results and success. When we have to treat a vital pulp, of course, there is no bacteria. So the goal is to work with a strict aseptic condition. The main obstacle we encounter during the root canal treatment is the complexity of the root canal anatomy. Of course, uh, we may be faced with a, a narrow canal, curved canal, S-curved canal, and sometimes it's difficult to be able to insert the first scouting file, an O8 or a 10 K file, because the canals are really narrow. So we need skill. And I uh, would uh, recommend you to read this very nice um, um, editorial from Bergenholz and Quist when they. Uh, really, really stress the operator experience, ability, attention to detail, and skill. It's very important to uh, uh, master uh, some uh, skill in, uh, uh, during an endodontic treatment. So my goal is to be predictable and reproducible. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, some cases I did in the early 80s with manual hand instrumentation and the shielder technique. And on the right-hand side, you can see more recent cases done with mechanized instrumentation. And you can see that the results are quite similar. So for me, the main predictive factor for success is the quality of the treatment. An endodontic treatment is a step-by-step -step procedure. And each step conditions the next one. 
So when we are able to fit the cone and get a good X-ray with a cone fit, we know that we are going to be very predictable uh, during the feeding procedure. So a root canal treatment start with an access cavity and you know that currently there is a trend to cut uh, the so-called uh, mini invasive uh, uh, access cavity. Two books have been published. A specific kit of birds have been launched for that in order to create this kind of hole or this kind of access. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, to waste time regarding this uh, mini invasive cavities, but I want to, you to refer to uh, the last evidence we have. And in this very recent paper, it has been shown that in all parameters considered, meaning efficacy of canal instrumentation, microbial reduction, root canal feeding, fracture resistance, conservative access did not offer any advantage, any advantage at all compared with the traditional endodontic cavities. And I would like you to read these two recent editorial in February and in April, where it has been shown that uh, the effort needed to do this, uh, uh, this uh, minimally invasive access uh, does, does not, does not just do not justify uh, the extra operative effort. And in uh, the last one published uh, this uh, month, uh, it has been shown that all study made perform about the resistance, uh, the tooth resistance have been uh, done with static load, which is absolutely uh, not the case in, a, in, a, in clinical and low. Uh, we, uh, the, it is a cyclic fatigue, which is uh, important with much less effort, much less load, but continuing load. And uh, it is this way to test uh, the resistance and not uh, static load. And of course, we need long time outcome, long time outcome, which is not the case with the current uh, publication we have. So for me, the ideal access is uh, the, this kind of access, conservative access. And for me, should be as small as practical, not, not too big, not too small. And the goal is to uh, get uh, rid of the pearl proof, uh, is to get a visual access, visual access to the canal orifices and create a reservoir for irrigant, which is absolutely critical for the cleaning and disinfection. We should work in a four wall access cavity. So we have to rebuild in many situations, the missing tooth structure. So the first step is to find the canal. And uh, sometimes we have to remove a uh, pulp stone and we, have, we, we can see pulp stone on an X-ray. And it's very easy. We have to cut a normal access. And then with an ultrasonic tip, we have to create a trench uh, at the interface between the pulp stone and the canal walls at the periphery. And when the pulp stone is not attached, is going to uh, be removed very, very easily. For that, I like this uh, Startex. Uh, it is an ultrasonic tip and an ultrasonic kit uh, uh, distributed by uh, Densply. And I like this kit because uh, it must uh, be used only in the access cavity and not deep inside canals, but these tips are very interesting because they are uh, they are micro mill. They are uh, not. Uh, there is no 
abrading coating on it. So they are very resistant. And most important, they uh, may be used with high power, high power. Besides, they have a water port. And sometimes from time to time, we can, uh, we can uh, use uh, some uh, irrigation. Uh, have a look to this uh, table. I'm using uh, this uh, Statelec Newton. And even with the smallest uh, tip, the number three, you can see that we can use a very, very high power. And for that, it's very, very convenient. And we can use some time uh, irrigation through the water port. Of course, sometimes we have to find a hidden canal. And uh, like in this case, where we cannot see any lumen inside uh, the root, the tooth is uh, calcified and uh, is rotated and, rotated and tilted. So for that, we have to cut uh, an ideal outline of your access. And then we have to reach the uh, dentin be below the enamel. And we have to create a concavity with a long shank burr at slow speed. I like to use this uh, LM burr from uh, my fair. And usually I, I use the number four, this one, to create a concavity in the middle of the uh, access cavity. And then we have to go to the second immediate uh, smaller uh, burr to create a second uh, concavity, maybe uh, about uh, one millimeter or one millimeter and a half uh, depth. And uh, at this stage, we usually reach the cinnamal as a um, um, enamel, cemento enamel junction. And at this stage, it is possible under the microscope to see the difference in color between the primary dentin and the tertiary dentin, including uh, the root canal. So at this stage, you can use uh, an ultrasonic tip to uh, place it on the gray color of the tertiary dentin and just uh, use it one or two seconds. And then after that, uh, you have to take a sharp uh, probe and check if you uh, can find a patency of uh, the canal. In most of the situation, it's possible to find patency when we have reached uh, the cemento enamel junction. If uh, we cannot see it, of course, it's possible to uh, use this uh, long shank burr from uh, months and uh, move deeper and deeper progressively, uh, millimeter after millimeter, and check with a sharp probe to see if uh, we have uh, patency. Of course, now it's possible to take uh, a combined CT in order to see exactly at what level le, the root canal system starts. And you can see that uh, this uh, cleaning and shaping uh, preparation was uh, not invasive at all. So for a calcified canal or fiber post removal, this uh, tip Start tip number three is very, very interesting because we can work it at uh, height power and it's going to disaggregate um, the uh, fiber. To find the MB2 canal after uh, locating the MB1, it's quite easy with this uh, Startex number two, which is a uh, active on the lateral aspect as a round tip to create a trench uh, starting from the MB1 canal, moving towards the palatal 
and removing the bulk of dentin, the major bulk of dentin overhanging this uh, canal. And uh, when we are creating this trench, it's uh, usually possible to see a groove. And at the end of the groove, it's possible to find the MB2 canal. So this uh, start text uh, number two is very interesting also for finding the uh, middle major canal in lower molars because he has a round tip. So after uh, completely shaping the MB1 and MB2 canal uh, and ML canal in this uh, uh, lower molar, we create a trench connecting both MB1 and B canal and ML canal. And in some situation, we are going to find the middle major canal. Uh, the literature said that uh, we can find it in about 20% uh, of the situation. I have a trick to give you. Uh, you will find this medial canal, middle major medial canal, in uh, all patients over uh, 40. Because uh, before, on young patients, you are going to find uh, an isthmus. And if you try to uh, place a file inside the isthmus, sometimes it is possible. But if you want to shape the canal, we end up with a stripping, with a stripping perforation. So uh, we've, in all patients, when you create the trench, it's possible to see the all of the M, 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 uh, MB canal. Then you are going to find dentin. Then a middle all, the small middle all in the middle portion. And again, dentin. And then the uh, lingual, uh, lingual, initial lingual canal. So the endodontic treatment is. Uh, divided in three different steps, canal preparation, disinfection, and obturation. And of course, we had a lot of uh, uh, involvement, uh, improvement in uh, instrumentation uh, in the last uh, 50 years. But for me, the main, the key dates are the first introduction of Nikel uh, titanium rotary file in 1991. Then 10 years later, uh, the uh, first uh, uh, files, rotary file with active cutting edges and variable taper, pro taper. And then uh, about uh, seven years later, the first thermal treatment, m wire uh, by Densply. And uh, in more recently from 2010 to 2015, uh, the re reciprocation, a new way of uh, shaping root canals, and of course, the last generation of thermal treatment. So for me, the breakthrough in, uh, in uh, the root canal treatment has been the introduction of uh, nickel titanium to, uh, uh, to substitute the uh, stainless steel file. And there is no turning back because all school in the world now are teaching rotary or, reciproc or reciprocation. And if you uh, re refer to this uh, uh, recent uh, uh, survey in the States done uh, with uh, endodontists, it has been shown that almost all of, the, all of them, 98.3% of them, are using uh, some kind of uh, nickel titanium mechanized instrumentation. So there is no turning back. So when there is a good idea, of course, uh, all companies they want to launch their own system. And I have to, to tell you that uh, today, all these systems are good, good one. 
So we have to select the system according to the main objective you are looking for when you are doing a root canal treatment. But all these systems are good, but even the best ones are stupid instruments. Stupid instruments because they are only able to follow a smooth pathway, patent pathway uh, created with an instrument or specific uh, rotary instrument before using uh, the shaping instrument. And uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, all should be wide enough to be able to accept the placement, the free placement of the first shaping file. So it is absolutely uh, uh, important to uh, uh, and mandatory to, to do uh, this before using this uh, rotary system. So the first, time, the first step finally is the glide path management, meaning that we need to secure the canal pathway. And you can see uh, and read the definition of glide path in endo. It is a smooth radicular tunnel from canal orifice to physiologic terminus. And of course, it's not a dedicated term used in endo. It, it is a term used in uh, aeronautics, has been used for a long time in aeronautics to help the approach of an aircraft when landing. So we need to create a smooth canal pathway before using our rotary or reciprocating shaping instrument. And usually uh, this pathway is uh, done with uh, the, uh, the use of a 10 and 15 K file. But sometimes it's difficult in a complex situation because between the 10 and 15 K file, we have a 50% increase of size. And it means that the stiffness of the 15 K file is too important, too high to be able to uh, go through uh, sharp apical curvature. So we have a lot of, we may uh, create problems using this 15K file. So we, to, uh, to avoid this uh, problem, we uh, have now at our disposal, a lot of night eye glide pass systems them because when there is a good ID, uh, of course, uh, all the companies, they want to launch their own glide pass system. And all this glide pass system, of course, should be used after a 10K5. But all these systems are good one. The only difference between this uh, glide pass system is about the number of files. Some are free files, like uh, pass file, uh, pass file was the first uh, glide pass uh, rotary system. Some have two. And the last one, the more recent system, they uh, feature only one instrument. Uh, we are using the ProGlider because the ProGlider has been the first uh, single file rotary glide pass. And uh, it is in M wire. It has a square cross section and uh, it has a progressive taper uh, along the, its active portion. In fact, it is a baby pro taper. And uh, it is a glide pass system that has been uh, the most uh, studied and published. I have uh, found 48 uh, study including 35 comparative study, all are, or are positive, or are positive on all these uh, parameters. So let's have a look uh, to the comparison between the 10K file and the ProGlider. 
the hole created by the 10k file, the 15k file, is half the uh, pathway created by uh, the ProGrader and in a much safer way. I just, uh, I just want to show you only uh, one study, uh, very interesting because it has been done with MicroCity, comparing K5, ProGlider in the middle, and uh, the pass file on the right hand side. And uh, in yellow, you have the initial canal, in red, the uh, glide pass, and in blue, the final shape. And on the bottom, the coronal portion, in the middle, the uh, middle portion, and in the upper part, the apical portion. And you see, you can see how precise and center uh, is a pro taper, is a pro glider. This is a way to use a pro glider, of course, always after a 10K file. And please look at my hand. We have to let the file go, let the file run. And then when we find a light resistance, use a painting outstroke motion and repeat the motion. And the file is going to reach the working lens by itself without any pressure. And here is a way to hold the end piece here. And in this way, we let the file run inside the canal. And this is also the way to use a, a pro taper rotary file. So we have to create a smooth glide pass. And of course, you can see here as a, a pro glider in a position, but always after a 10K file, always after a 10K file. Another case done by a uh, beautiful case done by uh, my friend uh, Giuseppe Cantatore from Rome. Look at the pro glider in position, but of course, in this situation, the straight portion the, of the canal, of the distal canal, has been completely shaped. Then the sharp apical curvature has been negotiated with an eight and a 10 K file. And then after the 10 K file, the proglider has been pre-curved and placed by hand, by hand, not uh, with uh, the motor. This is a case, there is a sharp apical curvature. Uh, the coronal portion has been pre-shaped and a loose 10K file has been placed at uh, the working lens. So we pre-curve the proglider. We place it. And then we have to rotate. And the file is going to find its own way after a 10K file. So we have to rotate to create space. And this is a way to take out the file. We irrigate and we redo the same procedure in order to create the good glide pass in this area. And in this sky, sharp apical curvature, there is no need to place and to try to over enlarge and continue to shape this area. That's enough. Of course, we have a manual handle adapter to be clipped on this uh, file uh, in order to make uh, the procedure easier. But in fact, the actual first step is to be able to negotiate a difficult canal to the canal terminus. And for me, the root canal preparation can be divided in three different step, initial canal negotiation of scouting, glide pass with rotary instrumentation or reciprocating instrumentation, and then the canal shaping. So I call the 
canal negotiation or the canal scouting, the creation of the first mini glide pass or first micro glide pass. Uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting to notice that uh, in the last issue of the glossary of endodontic terms, all these terms, there is absolutely no mention of this term, canal negotiation, scouting, catheterization, glide pass, nothing. So recently, there was an, a very uh, big paper published uh, at the end of the year, last year, uh, trying to clarify this problem and to propose a new terminology. 29 pages, pages 159 references. And they propose to uh, the placement of the 10K5, the loose 10K5, to call this placement glide pass. And then the use of the glide pass system Free flaring. I think it creates a lot of confusion because uh, we have glide pass system and the glide pass system is not the scouting and the pre flaring may be confused with a pre coronal enlargement. So I prefer <coughs> from far to use the creation of the mini glide pass with a 10 K file and uh, do uh, perform the final glide pass with the available glide pass or, uh, system on the market. It's more, uh, for me, it's, uh, it, make, it, it makes more sense. So we have two kind of, two types of canal. We have patent canal and we have difficult canals. So we have to, Scout and secure the canal pathway. And in a normal patent canal, we have to follow the canal pathway. We have to enlarge this pathway. And very, very important, we have to reproduce, and I said secure the canal pathway. In difficult cases, difficult canal, we have to discover the anatomy of the canal then we have to follow uh, the pathway of the canal. We have to enlarge it and we have to reproduce it, meaning to secure uh, the pathway. So the key factor is to follow, is to follow. And I'm going to tell you the way to follow. Usually the most used motion to uh, scout canal is a watch winding motion. On the uh, left hand uh, image, you have seen uh, the watch winding motion, but it is an animation. And in a, a similar clinical situation, we should be dead because we, it, it should be impossible to reach the working lens in this kind of situation for one main reason, the watch winding motion use an inward motion, inward motion with apical pressure, inward motion with apical pressure. And it is the most used uh, uh, motion to uh, negotiate uh, difficult canals. Look at what happened. This is a beautiful uh, animation from my uh, friend Cliff, Cliff Rudder. Look at what happened with the watch winding motion. Creation of a lot of dents in mud. And if you have a, a push-pull motion, look at what happened. Blockage. Dents in mud and blockage. So there are very few uh, documents regarding the way to negotiate uh, difficult canals. But in this one, it has been shown that the dented mud produced while attempting to negotiate the smaller MB2 canal 
accounted for several canals that were only partially negotiated. And of course, if you use an up and down motion, you are going to cut debris from the wall and the motion is going to push this debris uh, uh, in an apical direction. And uh, at this stage, we are blocked, we are blocked. So first of all, we have to use a light touch, a very light touch with the tip of the fingers. And we have to scout the canal with short and passive reciprocating motion, very passive reciprocation motion. Because it is the canal that guides the instrument and not the operator. And this is a way to hold the file only with the tip of the, on the, 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 the finger should be placed on the tip of the handle. And of course, you, uh, it's possible to uh, put a drop of uh, lubricant to help uh, this uh, file to move inside canals. Because initially, even if there is a, a solution inside uh, the pulp chamber, there is no, uh, no uh, irrigation, no lubrication inside the canal. So the key factor is to use passive apical instrumentation and take what the canal is giving you passively. Uh, Schilder was uh, promoting this passive apical instrumentation, meaning that we never, never, we should never push and always work on the outstroke. And uh, my friend uh, Cliff uh, Rudder and John Wentz and myself, we have been the uh, advocates of, of uh, passive apical instrumentation. Never, never push. Take what the canal is giving you passively. And the motion to use is the envelope of motion. We have to pre-curve the scouting file and insert the file to uh, the first light resistance. And at this stage, the file is rotated 180 degree or 360 degree clockwise on withdrawal, on withdrawal. And then we have to irrigate. And if we place again the file, it's going to move uh, deeper by itself. This is a way to follow, 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 without any pressure, the tip of your finger. And now resistance, this is it. It is an envelope of motion. I go back and again, follow, 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 follow. First light resistance, now, and envelope of motion, like that. And the file is moving deeper. So please don't confuse the envelope of motion and the watch winding pull motion. It's completely different. Watch winding pull motion use apical pressure. And this envelope of motion is used on the outstroke always. So to, sum to summarize, to uh, start scouting, use short and passive reciprocating motion. At the first uh, light resistant, use a envelope of motion and you are going to move deeper and deeper. And when you reach the working lens, the only motion permitted is an up and down motion with a short stroke in order to smooth this area. We don't have to think to enlarge, we want to smooth. And then when we have reached the working lens, sometimes the file is very tight at this level so we have to use, as you have seen, you have to take a good rest point and use local passive reciprocation in order to free the file and then use a push-pull motion. And then when it, it becomes possible to increase the amplitude to four or five millimeter, you have to straighten the file and drop it 
inside the canal, even in sharp apical curvature, the file should reach the working lens. That's what I call secure, securing the canal, okay? Securing the canal. Straighten the file. Use a file with a four or five millimeter amplitude when you can reach this amplitude, then take out the file, straighten the file and drop it. Even with a sharp apical curvature, the file should reach the working lens. And now the canal is secure. So the best instrument for uh, uh, scouting are this uh, um, C pilot file from uh, VGW because these files are conventional K file but with an hardening process, making this file more stiff. Because in uh, with small instrument we need stiffness, and with a big instrument we need flexibility. And as you can see, uh, they are available in 19, 21, and 25 millimeter, and we have intermediate sizes, six, eight, 10, 12 and a half, and 15. So take on message to follow the canal pathway, pre-curve, slide and glide to last resistance, it is follow. Then the first slide resistance envelope and uh, continue uh, scouting. If uh, using the envelope twice or three times and the file cannot uh, progress, uh, you have to pre-shape the patent portion of the canal, completely pre-shape the patent portion of the canal and then recapitulate follow. To progress in an apical curvature, you have to use a balance force motion and at the RT, at the root uh, canal terminus, we have to use a push-pull motion until you reach four millimeter amplitude. To uh, manage an apical curvature, of course, you have to use a balance force motion. It's a very uh, efficient motion, but always after pre-enlargement of the straight portion of the canal and uh, scouting uh, the uh, apical curvature with a 10 k phi loose, one millimeter beyond the foramen, beyond the foramen. If we don't want to be blocked at the foramen level. So, for long, narrow root and all necrotic cases, I never go immediately to the working lens. I used to scalp, do the glide pass and shape uh, in two stages. And you can see the way to manage an apical, uh, sharp apical curvature. Yeah. So, Regarding the relative importance of the different uh, step, in fact, uh, the canal negotiation, glide pass, and working lens count for about 45% of uh, the total amount of time and results. And of course, access count for 50%. So cleaning and shaping with uh, the current uh, uh, rotary or reciprocating instrument is a baby can do that is only five percent in my opinion so let's talk about pro taper gold recently uh, uh, launched on the market five years ago in fact they are exactly the same as a pro taper universal the only difference is the alloy it is gold instead of the conventional night night alloy. So they have uh, 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 thermal treatment, but this thermal treatment is done after machining, after machining, and uh, this uh, makes the file very, very uh, interesting and very, uh, very flexible and safe. There is a difference between the super elasticity of conventional night tile, and you are going to see uh, with uh, uh, the new heat treatment. You see 
on conventional NITI, it's quite difficult to pre-curve and deform the instrument because the instruments have a tendency to recover its own shape. But it's possible to do it to, if we insist, okay? So I'm going to do the same with the same file, but at this stage, I'm going to uh, freeze this area and decrease the temperature of the file. And the file is going to move from austenitic to uh, martensite. And now you have the gold treated with it. And you see that it's possible to place a curvature and the curvature stay. So in fact, it is very important to understand that the main advantage of the heat treatment is to increase the austenite finish temperature of the alloy. If this austenite finish temperature is higher than the body temperature, the file will be in a mix for for, uh, for protepper gold in a mix martensite air phase and austenite structure structure. So for example, for regular file, the austenite finish temperature is set around 20 degrees. So therefore uh, lower than the body temperature. In this case, the file is going to be super elastic like with the regular nitide. For the new heat treatment, the austenite night finish temperature is set above the body temperature. And in this case, the file is going in a martensite, mainly an air phase uh, structure and much more flexible and plastic. Currently, there is a lot of uh, emphasize on the increase of cyclic fatigue. So if you increase the cyclic fatigue, of course, you are going to increase the flexibility. But at the same time, you are going to decrease the cutting efficiency and the torque strength. And the file is not going, going to cut efficiency, efficiently and is going to deform very quickly. So, in fact, the good, uh, the good, uh, the good uh, file is a file that match the design, the metallurgy, and the metallurgy in order to be uh, to have performance and functionality. And for protepper gold, they are in a mixed martensite, air phase, and austenic structure. In this study, you can see that the protepper gold were significantly more flexible and resistant to fatigue than uh, protepper universal. And of course, they are more suited to, for preparing canal with a, a big curvature. See some, let's see some cases, predictable, reproducible, and, and universality. And look at this one, the same. Look at this one and this premolar. Look at the premolar. Beautiful shapes. Again. And quite conservative too. And uh, my friend in the States, uh, they can get the same results, you can see. So as always with Densply, it is a complete system with uh, matching paper point, matching uh, uh, got a con with matching obturators, and of course, uh, a motor and uh, uh, an oven. So, uh, the pro taper are really simple to use for many reasons. Because there is a small number of instruments. We don't have 20 or 21 instruments like in most of the system. The file 
are to be used in a chronological order and the sequence is always the same, whatever the clinical situation, which is a big, big advantage. And of course, we have to use a painting action in order to create more space coronally and let the file move passively in an apical direction. And there is no recapitulation, of course, and no need to hybridize. The standard sequence, of course, we have to scout the canal with an 08 and a 10 and create uh, the first mini glide pass. And we have to determine the working lens. Then we have to use a proglider to create the glide pass. And then we may start to shape using S1, okay, at the working lens always with a painting and following motion. We have to paint and let the fire run. And then the same with S2, painting and let it run. And there is a good uh, trick uh, after using S1. If you take S2 in your hand and drop it, you should never have more than two millimeters of work to do meaning that you are in a complete safety because two millimeter is not enough to risk any problem or breakage. Then after S2 at the working lens, you have to confirm the working lens because in curved canal, the working lens has been a little bit reduced, half a millimeter sometimes. And then we have to use a finisher and we have to use finisher one, F1, at the working lens also, the new working lens. And then with this time, the, the opposite way to use the file, we have to follow and then paint, follow and paint. For shaper, we have to paint and follow, for finisher, follow and paint. And then we have to uh, check uh, the, uh, to gauge the uh, apical uh, foramen. And uh, if uh, the file is snug, the F1 is snug, you may use F2 half a millimeter shorter in order to get a better deep shape. And also F3 half a millimeter shorter than F2. In difficult canal, I don't recommend to go to lens immediately. So we have to shape the canal in two uh, segments, uh, reach the first light resistance, create your glide pass, shape with S1 and S2, and then use again your 10K file. And at this stage, just have a look to the handle of this uh, 10K file. If the handle is on access, of course, you continue the sequence to the work at the working lens. But if the handle is off access, you need to relocate a little bit the canal orifice using SX. Uh, this instrument are very smart instrument because they tell us where they are working. Looking only uh, where the debris are located, the dentin debris are located bet between the, the flutes. For S1, for example, you are going to see debris on the coronal aspect. For S2, in the middle portion of the canal. And for F3, you should see debris in the apical region. If you don't see debris in the apical flute, it means that the shape doesn't exist. We did not prepare the apical region. So we have to go to F2 and then with F2, uh, after using F2, we can see debris inside the apical flute and we know that uh, we have got the shape and we have got the mechanical 
apical preparation, which is absolutely mandatory. This is a way to see uh, the dentin inside the flutes. And we have to understand that the protaper are the, the only shaping system creating a uh, deep shape, which is very, very critical. Because as you see on the image, the shaper are working in the coronal and middle portion and don't work at all in the apical region. But the finisher has, are completely free in the middle and upper portion and they uh, shape the apical region and create the deep shape for creating a mechanical cleaning for optimizing the fluid exchange and for obturation control. The deep shape is really a key feature of protaper. Of course, the irrigation regimen is a following between each active instrument, one milliliter of sodium apocorite, patency uh, with uh, the 10K file in order to uh, uh, to put debris into suspension and re-irrigation with one milliliter of sodium hypochlorite in order to uh, eliminate uh, the debris. And the final rinse at the end of the shaping procedure is done with one milliliter of EDTA and activation of course of this EDTA. And then after suctioning the EDTA, we activate uh, sodium apochlorite, three milliliter of sodium apochlorite during 30 seconds per canal. So to end up this uh, presentation, I think I'm exactly on time. So for taper gold, the pros, we have always predictable shapes. The sequence is always the same. There is less instrument. We are using the same motion for shaper and finishers. The new uh, protaper gold are flexible and uh, have a good uh, cyclic fatigue resistance. They can be prevent. And of course, universality, efficiency, safety, and confidence. For me, cons, I don't, I don't find cons on this. Uh, uh, shaping system. They can, you can address any kind of situation. And in fact, there is a long protaper legacy uh, starting in 2001 with a protaper. Then in 2006, we have a protaper universal, 2014 protaper gold, and in 2019, 572 millions of protaper files have been sold. So it is from far the number one system in the world. And to come in September 2021, 20, we will have the protaper ultimate, the last version, much more interesting than the uh, previous one. So thank you for your attention and see you at the Apex. And now I'm ready to answer any question. Thank you, Pierre. Um, I didn't receive any questions yet, but maybe people, when you, because you're done now, they have questions. If people have a question, please tell, you can ask them in the Q&A down on your Absolutely. screen. Absolutely. And um, maybe uh, we can, uh, we can uh, give some information regarding uh, rotary instrumentation and uh, reciprocation. Uh, reciprocation is a very nice way to shape uh, canals, of course. Uh, it's uh, quite simple, but uh, uh, it uh, cannot address all situation, all anatomical situation. So, uh, in specific situation, you have to go back to uh, end instrumentation. 
And uh, of course, we have to uh, we have to keep in mind that it is supposed to be uh, one file uh, preparation, shaping uh, file, one shaping file. But in fact, we have uh, the primary, we have a small, we have a medium, and we have a large. So <laughs> we have four files. And four files means exactly the same number of files of a, a rotary system, you know? So it's up to, uh, I think reciprocation is well suited for uh, GPs, for general dentists, because it's quite simple. Uh, there is not a lot of, um, uh, uh, of education and uh, uh, not a lot of uh, learning curve, in fact. So uh, it's a good way. It's a good way. It's now, a good way. We received a couple of questions in the meantime. Yes, thank you. Uh, what about the mention of the new ProTaper Ultimate files in comparison to the Universal and the Gold? I, I cannot tell you now, but uh, uh, they are going to be launched in September, this September, September 21. And uh, it's going to be a more simple sequence. Okay, and uh, with a different cross section, dif uh, uh, different uh, cross section, several alloy depending upon uh, the type of the file. So there is a lot of innovation, a lot of innovation. And I'm very excited about this uh, Protaper Ultimate uh, system, but I cannot tell you more. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we will have to wait till September then, that's okay. Yes, we have um, to wait September. Yeah, do you or, only... Or we have to wait uh, the advertising campaign, maybe before. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get a sneak peek then, yes. <laughs> do you only use the SX file after the F1? Not, uh, the, you mean SX. Oh, SX, SX sorry, yeah. SX. Uh, SX is an accessory file. So uh, usually uh, it is used, uh, from what I know, many, many, many uh, colleagues use this SX initially in order to open up the, uh, the coronal part of the canal, okay? But uh, we can do that. Uh, but I think SX should be used uh, after S1 and S2 uh, when we feel that we need a, a little bit more, uh, more straighter access uh, in uh, the area of a curve canal. But uh, can be used initially too. Huh? I have a lot of, uh, I know a lot of uh, colleagues that uh, who use uh, this uh, file initially, and it is quite safe, especially the the gold one. The gold one is very safe. Okay. Um, after two times of sterilization, the plastic coloring has to be removed because the instrument doesn't fit anymore in the headpiece. How yes. to enhance? Uh, nothing, because this file is supposed to be a single use. Okay. <laughs> That's the reason why they put this, uh, uh, this ring. So when the file is, uh, has been used one, and if you put in the sterilization, the ring is, is gone. So we don't. Normally, we should not use it again. What we have to, to know about reusing a file, rotary or reciprocating, if uh, you are using a microscope and if you are using a file only once in a, in a molar, for example, if you have a look under the microscope to the flutes, you are going to see that the flutes are completely dull. So what does it mean? It means that in a second or a third uh, utilization, we are going, the file is not cutting, uh, 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 is not, uh, has not the same cutting action. And that means that we have to press more. And if we have to press more, there is a, a risk of blockage. Uh, my, 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 uh, my take home lesson today is never press, never push inside the canal. Never, never. Okay. If you do that, you are going to be always safe. 
Okay, there are a lot more questions, so I hope yeah. you have enough time. Yes, uh, there, there are all kinds of cheaper lookalike pro tapers on the market now. Edge taper, go taper. Are they yeah. even efficient or what is the difference? I, I think the main difference is about the quality of the manufacturing process, you know? So uh, according to uh, the test made uh, at the plant, it has been shown that the, the, the dimension are not always the same. The quality of the machining is not the same. But of course, uh, if you use this file once, you can use them. Of course, you can use them. But I think the big difference will uh, come uh, with uh, ProTaper Ultimate. And it's going, it will be very, very difficult to copy this protaper ultimate because there is a terrible, uh, terrible difficulty of uh, machining. You we have to uh, wait till September. <laughs> yes, we have to wait September. Yeah. Um, is it recommended to use the same torque setting when dealing with difficult canals as with simple canals? Yes, it's a very good question. I have to tell you that I never change the torque on my instrument, on my motor, by using the maximum torque, okay? But torque is, is a very important uh, feature because torque means efficiency. So torque, what is the definition of torque? Torque, if you, if the file, how do we measure torque? Torque should, means that the file is locked at the tip and the energy of the motor tends to rotate the, the, the file. So if the file is free inside the canal, it's an advantage. It's a big advantage. So if you work with this file all the way on the outstroke, there is no risk to lock the tip of the file, okay? So torque is an advantage for me and I, I'm using uh, I'm using the maximum torque on, on my motor. I'm using an X smart motor, and I'm, I'm using uh, uh, four newtons. Okay. Um, can you skip any files in the Pro Taper Gold sequence? Yes. I should not say that, but yes. <laughs> if you have a good glide pass, you should uh, start with S two. With S two, if you are a little bit careful, huh? of course. Okay. Yeah. Uh, once the pro taper gold um, is bended in the end because of the root canal, you should not re-enter the F1 to avoid breaking. Is this right? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, depending, uh, you know, bending the file is, a, is an interesting feature. I think bending this kind of, giving this kind of bend along the active portion. It's helped the, uh, the, the operator to reach uh, the posterior teeth very, uh, in a more easier way, okay? But then if you pre-curve only the apical region, I recommend to use the file by hand, okay? By hand. So exactly what I said before, shape the straight portion of the canal, okay? Scout the apical curvature, create your glide pass with a, a loose 10K file, one millimeter beyond the foramen, because if you stay, if you use the up and down motion at the foramen level, you are going to be blocked at the foramen level and you are going to end up one millimeter or sometimes two millimeters short. So in an apical curvature, we need to work the 10 k file one millimeter beyond the foramen, okay? And when we, you have got your glide pass in this uh, curvature, uh, you uh, may use a, a pro taper uh, shaper uh, with the pre-curvature at the tip like that, okay? Okay. Um, why bending file when it's for using in a rotation move? No problem, because the file is completely set inside the, inside the walls. 
<laughs> so because the file has no restoring force because the file is, is soft, there is no, no danger. So we have made a lot of uh, transportation tests in uh, this kind of curvature, and we have noticed that there is absolutely no transportation, which is uh, quite interesting. Okay, uh, do you use the same power height with all the files? Power? What do you mean? Power height. Um, I think they mean like the power in your in your uh, machine. Yes, of course. Power mean uh, mean uh, torque. Yeah. And speed. I'm using three hundred RPM and uh, four newton torque. Okay, and I don't change at all for all instruments. It's a waste of time for me. Yeah, no wasting time. No. Uh, which type, uh, which type of obturation system do you use? My uh, my current and favorite uh, system for filling is one vertical compaction, the Schilder technique. The Schilder technique. Yeah. Okay. Um... But with this kind of shape. The kind of shape we get with a pro taper, you are yeah. going to be successful with any type of filling technique, any type. Of course, uh, uh, if you are if you are using a sophisticated technique, you are going to be a little bit better. But uh, if uh, if you get the seal, you will. If you get the seal, you will. Okay, uh, what is your opinion about one file systems such as wave one in dealing with difficult canals? That's what I said before. Uh, in difficult canal, uh, you should know when to stop. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you feel some uh, resistance to progress, please don't insist because if you do that, you are going to create a ledge. And then it's going to be very difficult to bypass it and to uh, uh, and to get a, a great shape after that. So uh, be careful in difficult canal. Uh, if you feel some resistance, be careful. Don't insist and don't take out the file. Clean out the clean out the flute. Uh, irrigate and uh, use again your 10k file try to see if the canal is way patent and if it is the case reuse but if you feel some uh, some uh, impediment if you go on the impediment you increase the impediment and you are going to be blocked you are going to create a ledge okay uh, when do you use pro taper and when do you use true anatomy I don't use true anatomy. I don't use true anatomy for many reasons. Uh, there is a trend today to uh, use uh, the so-called mini invasive preparation. Uh, you know, one of uh, the drawbacks for me is we need to instrument the wall and we need to instrument the apical uh, portion. How can we do that with a very small file? It's impossible. It's impossible. So then we have to we have to feel, and it's difficult to feel too. So we have to use a very very thin uh, galapar chacon. Sometimes it's impossible, and uh, uh, we are using this uh, BC sealer. And with the BC sealer, we don't know. We don't have we don't we don't have a lot of uh, uh, background to see what's going the result with the BC sealer because there is washout, there is washout, they are soluble. So we don't know, we don't know. So um, I prefer a conventional uh, system to shape the root canal. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about motor with built-in apex locator? Is that accurate enough? Yes, uh, but it's, uh, it's a, it is a preference of, uh, it's the operator preference. Uh, personally, I prefer to use a, a separate apex locator. 
because um, you know, uh, if you use an apex locator on the end piece, for example, uh, as soon as you place your initial file inside the canal, if there is some uh, uh, irrigant inside, the, the file is going to rotate uh, counterclockwise and get out. So it's a waste of time. So maybe we should, uh, we should remove the, uh, the, uh, the, the remote, the reverse motion until we reach about uh, coronal two firm. And then only at this stage uh, to use it. I think the best way should be not to use it at all, to reach the coronal two firm, take at this time a 10K file, use your apex locator, and then your UN piece with your apex locator. Because at this stage, it's, it is going to help you a lot. Uh, may I, uh, uh, may I, I, I am clear or not? Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, well, at least I think it's uh, the answer, the, the question is answered. Yeah, okay. Um, do okay. you have any tips on negotiation deep splits in premolars? Oh, yes. In fact, uh, you know, in a premolar, we have two kinds of in fact, it's usually a lower a premolar with a split uh, which is going to be in some situation very deep. So when the split is coronal, it's not difficult because we know exactly where we can place a file, especially if you are using a microscope, you know, so you can see the furcation, okay? But uh, the problem is more difficult when the split is uh, much deeper. When the split is much deeper, you have to create a better access to the split, okay? And if uh, we do that in some situation, we can see under the microscope the bifurcation, or if we don't see it, well, uh, we can feel and we can see the direction of the file when we place it, okay? Usually there is one major canal and one distal canal. Okay, so uh, my trick is to completely shape one canal. Okay, so when you do that, when you place your, uh, when you want to, to shape the second canal, when you place your file and the file is tight, you know that you are in the second canal. You know, yeah. understand? <laughs> So shape completely one, the easiest, or the, deep, or, or the, the more uh, difficult one. And then when you place the second, when you want to shape the second one, when you place the file, if the file is completely loose, you know that you are in the first one and you should feel that the file is completely tight. This is a way. There is no uh, really, uh, there is not really a, a trick to, uh, to solve this. It's a difficult situation. This, uh, this uh, prim lower precom premolar are the most difficult uh, uh, teeth to treat for me. It sounds really difficult, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are, they are. For me, they are the most difficult. Okay, um, one moment. Um, oh, uh, what is the difference in comparison with uh, with Pro Taper Gold with Pro Taper Next? Oh, it's a, there is a big difference. There is a big difference because um, uh, the Pro, Pro Taper Next they have um, enough center uh, um, um, uh, they, they work with what we call precession, meaning that the file is creating an envelope when uh, it rotates, okay? So uh, usually the, 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 uh, the, the, the volume of the canal is usually much bigger than the volume of the file, okay? Because it is off-center, it creates an envelope, okay? 
Yes. So that's the main main difference. Main the difference. Cross section, you mean? Yes, the cross section is dif different, but it's also it's it's the motion of the file. It's called precession. Uh, it creates an, an envelope. The file is not rotated over, over itself. It's, it's doing this. You see? Yeah. That's what I'm doing with uh, my uh, 08 or uh, 10K file when I'm using the envelope of motion, you know? Because doing this, doing this, doing this, I create uh, more shape, more space. Okay, um, sorry if I missed that, but do you gauge canals after F1? Gauge? Go, well, go. It's, it's, it's depend, you know, and with ProTaper Gold, uh, this, uh, uh, the decision is made easier, easy. Uh, if you see debris in the, in the apical flutes, the three, last uh, three millimeter, if you see debris, you, in uh, most of the situation, the shape is, is done. So there is no need to gauge and uh, do uh, and go deeper, especially in very narrow canal, you know? But yeah. in the majority of canals, I use, I use, a, I use an F2. Okay. Well, that was the last question. There were a lot in the end. Thank really you. nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the questions for our from our uh, um, thank you our for participants. All my colleagues who ask the question. I hope I could answer clearly. I hope so. My English is not <laughs> the best, but uh, if I can be understandable, it's fine. Well, I understood, and I recorded the webinar, uh, so people can always uh, watch it back. Good, and, good, good. So they, they can review it again if they uh, thought the webinar went too quickly or um, or when they want to revisit the answer of their question. Okay. Um, I have a question for our participants. If they can please uh, fill in our questionnaire so we can keep on uh, improving our, our webinars because we would like to do a lot more. Uh, I would like to thank you very much, Pierre, for your for your webinar. It's a pleasure. And for answering all the questions. There were a lot sure. in the end, which we really appreciate. Maybe um, we will do a, another one with a Protepo Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the year. Yes, that will yes, be yes. great. Yes, yes, yes. Then we all know finally what it will look like. Absolutely. <laughs> that will be really great. Yeah, we can we can plan one at the, at the end of the year. Sure. Yeah, that thank would be you. really nice. Okay, well, thank you again for your presentation. Thank you. And um, thank you. we would we like to wish you a very nice evening and nice evening also for, for our participants. Thank you. You will receive the recording in your thank you email, oh. which you would receive in a couple of days. Very good, thanks. Yeah. Good evening. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.